Hey TCS viewers, Chris Nichols here again from the camera store and of course as you've seen we were in New York recently we got to see the pre-production version of the Sony a6300 and those brand new G Master lenses but today we now have a production a6300 we're going to give you a full-on review as usual of this very exciting camera now I know what you're thinking is oh geez another boring flat Calgary location you know we're just going to shoot in front of this wall today but Unfortunately, sorry to disappoint you, but instead we're gonna do our Sony a6300 review from beautiful Miami Beach in Southern Florida. It's gonna be great. We're gonna have some beautiful locations and a lot of fun. All right, guys, so we're just going to go for a walk here next to Indian Creek, kind of head down to South Miami and see what we can shoot and have some fun. Now, keep in mind that Jordan is shooting this entire video on the A6300. You got S-Log2, he's going to be shooting S-Log3, and a really nice bonus now, 800 ISO is our minimum sensitivity, so we can handle some of this bright light without having to ND the hell out of it. I've already seen fish as well. No fishing rod, the things I sacrificed for you guys. So what I'm trying to capture here is the juxtaposition between old and new and the duality that is present in all of us or something like that. All right guys, so I've had a little bit more time now to play with the A6300. New York, we didn't have much time and of course that was pre-production so we can't make 100% you know, claims about the camera. But certainly it does have a nice weight and a rugged feel to it, you know, thanks to the weather sealing and the magnesium body. As for the button layouts, I mean, of course, I haven't really changed anything from the A6000 and shooting on the street here, I'm not noticing any limitations, but tomorrow we're going to be going out and shooting sports in action. And I already know that an extra few custom buttons would be really handy just to keep autofocus right at our fingertips. I mean, if Sony's really trying to aim this camera at wildlife shooters, journalists, they're going to want more customization, but everything's still the same. I could definitely use a bigger knurl on the back here too. I've got smaller hands, but if you had larger hands, it'd be nice to have more of a pronounced lip here at this back thumb grip and of course that record button's still there Jordan will probably talk about it but he hates the place of that button overall guys I'm enjoying it it's just they could have made some changes with the new body instead of keeping it exactly the same All right, guys, we did bring the A6000 as well because we do want to see how these cameras have changed. You know, the 6300's got some improvements, and one that I really appreciate now is the new viewfinder. 1.2 megapixels on this one. We've almost doubled that now to 2.36 on the 6300. I'm actually really liking the 120 frame per second viewfinder. No lag, super smooth. And we saw that with the pre-production and it's working great. If I could only have one complaint about it, eye relief is not great. You gotta get your eye in there, which is tough on a day like today when I'm wearing sunglasses. Now, yes, the Sony a6300 is still kitted with the 16 to 50 kit lens. It's compact, of course, but we all know by now the optical quality is not great. I'm using the 16 to 70 f4. It's much better mated with this camera, especially as the sensor gets better and better. I still would like to see, though, a nice compact weather sealed kit lens, you know, something that's durable. It makes this camera a great walk around, just like a small Pentax. So we're going to have to wait for that a little longer. All right, TCS viewers, so we are here with Max Yuryev, and Max, you do a lot of video stuff. Check out his channel. Now, uh, we just didn't have the time, nor did we really want to test the overheating issue because uh, we just were super busy. But Max, you went through all the trouble to do that, and we really appreciate it. So we're going to ask you, Max, on the A6300, was there any overheating? You'll have to talk in the mic. We only brought one. No. Perfect. And uh, did you try that at all the different frame rates? Yes. And there's still no overheating? No. Perfect, there you have it. So Max Uriev has confirmed there's no overheating in the A6300. So uh, don't worry about that, guys. A fantastic, fantastic thing for the video capabilities. Max, thank you very much. You're welcome. No. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, guys, throughout Miami now, doing some night photography. And just a side note, we're shooting on the A6300's internal microphones, not because I forgot my lav mic at home at the hotel room, 
but because we want to give you a full-on review of the camera's capabilities, including the internal microphones. We're out here shooting with Peter Bahan. Thank you so much for coming home with us out. Now, Peter's a local Miamian, a fantastic photographer and videographer here locally. Yeah, uh, I'm glad you guys are here in Miami. I'm looking forward to taking you around to a couple of the cool spots that nobody knows about, showing you some of the secret locations, and uh, here we go. Very Stay cool. It. It's so good to have a local thing guiding us around. Thanks so much. Let's go do it. All right, guys, up nice and early for another beautiful day in Miami. Now, we've got our beautiful model here, and we're shooting strobes with the Sony a6300. 160 to the second maximum flashing speed. Maybe not as good as other SLRs on the market, but uh, we're getting 100 ISO. We're getting about F8 at 160th to get decent background exposure. You know, use a couple stops of ND, and this camera is going to sing in situations like this when you're trying to shoot with the sun. We are coming to you now from the Miami Action Park. That's action with a K. And uh, we've got some cable riders here. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to test out the Sony a6300 still capabilities for autofocus. And Jordan's also going to test out its video autofocusing capabilities. He's not super optimistic, but hopefully we can prove him wrong. All right, so autofocus test on the a6300. This is a big deal because, you know, in my opinion, Sony is really marketing this camera towards people who shoot journalism, sports, wildlife. Can this start to push SLRs out of that market? Now, I was actually very impressed with the 6300. I think you guys will like it a lot. You know, first lock on autofocus, I did try that. It can be hard, especially at distances, to get that single point to catch what you want, but then it does a very good job of tracking across the whole frame. I did get a few missed shots that way, though. But using zone focusing and continuous, I was very, very impressed. I mean, very much a setup like any other camera, but the Sony tenaciously hangs on. I had very few situations where the camera would focus on the water instead of the person, even with splashing going up. Uh, I did also find that even with the 85 1.4 shooting wide open or at f2, it still usually hung on to where I wanted it to. Shoot a lens like the 7200 f4 and you really have no problems. You know, we've always found that with Sony, when it hits, when it gets the shot, it is usually in focus. And now what they're doing is upping the frame rate as well. I did use the eight frames per second a lot because it was helpful, especially in a situation like this, to be able to keep my frame, see where these people are going. They're changing, accelerating, decelerating constantly. And it was nice to be able to see a heads up, real time, not lagging behind so I could keep those guys where I wanted them. You know, nothing I'm gonna say, I mean, a lot of people like the A6000 autofocusing, and when we tested it, we did like it overall, point to point and continuous, but it was not the fastest continuous autofocusing camera in the market. I would say the 6300 is vastly improved over the A6000 for continuous autofocusing. You still have the eye focusing, you got lock on focusing, it all works fantastic. It wasn't all great though. I mean, one thing I will say, I was back button focusing because that's how I'd primarily shoot an event, action, sports, keep it in AFC and use back button focusing. Now you can do that on the 6300, but they kept that same small switch and it's sometimes really hard to find with your thumb. Um, with practice over the day after hours, I was getting used to it, but I do think they could have changed that. We got a brand new body. We could have changes to the handling. So that's kind of a little bit of a downside. As an interesting side note too, we decided to test it with the Metabones adapter and the Canon glass that we brought. You know, when you do a full burst and hold the shutter down, the Metabones is just gonna lose it. It's gonna stop trying to focus. But if you keep it in pulses, you know, burst of three, burst of four, and then let it capture again, it actually did a pretty respectable job. So overall, I wouldn't use the Metabones for shooting action in sports, but you're not gonna feel undergunned if you're shooting portraits, you know, some events, things like that. You'll do okay, it was pretty good. 
All right, guys, so we're just outside the Miami Free Running and Parkour Academy. We've been shooting in there, but it presents a very unique challenge. Very low light action. We're shooting 6400 ISO, 500 of a second, F2 kind of stuff. I mean, it's really pushing the envelope. The other thing too, of course, autofocus is gonna have a hard time. In this low light situation, a lot of missed frames. I mean, any camera is gonna struggle. I'm still finding that using a zone with continuous autofocus, your best bet. Now, we did try things like the eye detect autofocus, which we love. With fast action, it's just not able to do it. But here you can see some portraits are shooting. You got people behind metal bars. The bars are in front and the camera does an admirable job of ignoring that and focusing on faces. I did try the lock on outdoors with the wake borders. It did a very good job. Indoors here, again, it does struggle. You're gonna lock on to arms and legs. You got lots of movement in between. So very difficult move with fast action. Stick to zone. And again, it's gonna be just doing a lot of shots. Luckily, the camera can shoot quickly. That does help. Well guys, this is not a bad way to spend the day and shoot TCS TV. I tell you, it's really, really nice out here in Miami. And we've actually really been enjoying the A6300 as well. Now, a few comments I want to make about image quality, just our impressions. Uh, skin tones actually seem to be a little bit different. Tell me about the JPEG processing. If you shoot raw, of course, you can adjust it, but you know, nice colors, pleasing tones. I've been really happy with that today. Maybe that's partly the beautiful light. Uh, you know, other things we've been finding, especially in comparison to the A6000. So first off, we did an ISO ramp up here. And you can see as we go 1600, 3200, and we get start getting higher. Check out these samples because what we're noticing is we're not seeing a big difference in the noise pattern. I mean, again, remember, same size sensor, same amount of megapixels, but you know, by, by doing the copper wiring, making the micro lenses a little bit shorter, a little bit flatter, getting more light on here, we're finding that we get more detail, okay? Low light performance is definitely improved, getting great detail off this sensor, and you can see comparison and sharpness between these two shots here. So I would say a substantial improvement in low light performance on the 6300. Not everything's improved though. I mean, we really appreciate the low light boost as always, but dynamic range is still pretty much the same. We really didn't notice any sort of uh, real change there. And that's okay, I gotta remember this, this sensor is one of the better ones out there for dynamic range, but we're not getting an improvement there. Also, overall resolution, 24 megapixels is great. I think it's a good number for most photographers out there, but you're not gonna see any extra sharpness here in resolution. We didn't really notice a difference there. Overall though, image quality as good or better than the A6000 as expected. Now, of course, this should come as no surprise, but since our preview video in New York, the A6300 has not grown a touch screen and it has not grown inbuilt stabilization, but we expected that. So still overall, I have really been enjoying the camera. It's a great platform, but another big thing about this camera is video. Let's cut to Jordan next. He's gonna talk about that. Hey guys, it's Jordan, the sunburned video guy. And I was testing the A6300 late last night, did not get much sleep. So if I say things that aren't words, um, that's why. But I wanted to spend a lot of time testing this because the 6300 is actually a very important camera for Sony. Previously, if you wanted things like 4K and log recording, you were looking over the $3,000 price point or at the Sony RX series of cameras. And this fills a really important niche. So. Looking at the image, this camera really is designed to be shot at 24 frames per second. That's where it can take the entire sensor, uh, super samples of 4K image out of it. And you can see here, we get a very, very sharp image. But what's also a benefit when they do that is we do get very nice low light performance. I mean, here you can see a 6400 ISO shot. There's definitely a bit of noise in the shadows, but mid-tones, highlights are very clean. And you could certainly crush the blacks, take some of that out of it. Uh, it's a beautiful image. It's probably their best uh, Super 35 picture, I'd say. Now we're testing the North American version of the 6300, so we also have the option to shoot 30 frames per second. However, if you do that, there is a bit of a crop. We figured it out to be about roughly a two times crop of full frame. You need to be aware of that, choose your lenses accordingly. And looking at the picture, it is still very sharp, um, but low light sensitivity compared to the 24 frames, I'd say it's about a stop worse. One interesting thing we found is if you're concerned about rolling shutter, shooting fast pans, a lot of action, 
Uh, rolling shutter is quite a bit better at 30 frames per second because it doesn't have to scan the entire sensor. Now the fact that this camera can record 120 frames per second at 1080 continuously is a big deal to me. It'll go right until the card or the battery dies if you want to shoot long takes. And the quality is fairly good, but it is definitely soft even compared to the other 1080 recording modes in this camera. As well, we did find some issues with Moiré, you can see on Chris's shorts here. Uh, it's a bit of a downside, I was really hoping to use this as like a B-cam slow-mo recording device, but I do think it's better suited to shoot at the standard frame rates. That being said, the 60 frame per second on it is beautiful, so you can get some slow motion without any image issues, but the 120 frames is a little bit dodgy. Now when I'm shooting video, I'm pretty much always manually focusing, but I know that's not going to be the case for everyone using this camera, so we did test the video autofocus on it. And in a word, it's, it's inconsistent. Sometimes it's amazing how it'll lock onto a subject and track a very fast moving subject like these wakeboarders here, hang right on, but then sometimes it just tends to get lost. Now, I do really like that you can go into the menu and you can actually tell it how quickly you want it to move from one subject to another, as well as what speed it's actually gonna use. So you can customize it quite a bit, but I just found I couldn't reliably trust it. Sometimes it would be focusing on someone, drift to the background, uh, it's certainly going to be usable in a pinch. It's one of the better mirrorless autofocus systems I've seen, but it's still not something that I'd consider 100% reliable. I think Canon's dual pixel phase detect is still the gold standard for video autofocus. One thing that's great to see on a 6000 series camera is we now have log recording. With the A6000, we knew it had great dynamic range, but we couldn't really take advantage of that when we were recording video. Now on the 6300, we have S-Log2, we have S-Log3, and the native ISO is 800. So you shouldn't even need that much ND filtration when you're out shooting on a bright day. Now remember, log, you do have to grade that stuff. It takes some time, it takes some practice, but you will get access to a lot more dynamic range and it's a lot more flexibility with the files in post. This is a huge improvement. So the A6300 does tick a lot of boxes for video shooters, but there's a huge omission and that's that there's no headphone jack on this thing. So we're shooting with it today and I'm a bit terrified because we're using a wireless system and fortunately the D11s we're using do have a headphone jack on them, but let's suppose the cable gets a little bit loose or pops out that's connecting to the camera. I'm gonna have no idea till I get back and look at my footage in post. Now, we thought we could get around that with an SMAD P3 adapter, makes it connect right through the hot shoe, but as soon as we hook that in, we can't control our audio levels anymore. It seems like a weird glitch. It's hopefully something they can fix in firmware, but it's confusing and that's why I'm a little scared shooting today. I hate using cables with no headphone line. So with all the goodness in the 6300, you might be asking why would I get an A7 II series body? And aside from the headphone jack I've mentioned, the other big one is that they do have the built-in 5-axis stabilizer, which is very effective. And remember, a lot of the new Sony lenses don't have stabilizers in them, and you're going to be adapting glass a lot with this if you're shooting video. Most of those lenses aren't going to be stabilized, so you're going to be using supports. You're going to be using a monopod like we are here, or keeping it on a tripod, and that's a big drawback to a body like this. As well, it has all of the classic Sony downfalls. The battery life is not very good. I found you get about an hour shooting 4K. As well, still no touch screen for selecting your subjects when you're using video autofocus. And I still, when I'm in video mode, can't use the shutter button to record video. I don't know why I have to reprogram it to another custom button, but I don't think there's enough custom buttons anyways. It's a huge pain I can't do that. I'm sure it's, I could probably program this in. I, it drives me crazy. I don't know why they haven't done it yet. Now, Jordan brings up some good points about touchscreen and video, and I know, it, again, it'd be great to have in the 6300, but I didn't actually miss it that much. You know, the focusing capabilities on this camera are quite easy to set up. I do like the A6300, 6000 sort of handling style. It works fine. The function button's great, so that wasn't such a big deal. Inbuilt stabilization, a fantastic luxury to have here, and we don't have it. How does that impact stills? I guess I'll say this, you know, again, many of the lenses are stabilized, but many of the new ones are not. I was finding on the 6300, when you shoot single frames, it's a very stable platform, but when we tried it out in continuous, we started to find that around 125th of a second, 160th of a second, we're actually starting to get some movement, some motion blur. I don't know if it's just the, the shutter firing, the mechanism shaking, I'm not sure, but stabilization could have helped there. But 
let's keep it in context. If you are shooting sports and action, you know, I was doing the wakeboarding, I wanted my shutter speeds up faster, 500th of a second or faster. And at that rate, the inbuilt stabilization is not gonna help you out and you need the fast shutter speed to freeze the fast action anyways. So keep it in context. It'd be great to have, but I don't think it's a deal killer for the A6300. You know, the other huge change on this series of cameras is, of course, the autofocus. I mean, that's what everybody was talking about when it comes to stills. You know, that's the big change. And, you know, again, there's a lot of controversy when it came to the press members as well. You know, we're talking about it. I actually had really good success with the 6300. I found it was very capable. It tracked well. It was very quick shooting. And I found that my hit rate was quite high, but a lot of the other members did have some issues with it. You know, I guess I'd say this. First thing you got to remember, the E6300 is a camera, and cameras still have to be driven by the operator. You know, we don't have cameras that can read our minds yet. It just doesn't work that way. The 6300 has a lot of features, like the lock on autofocus, and when used in the right context, it works great. The face detect and the eye following focus also work fantastic when used appropriately. I mean, you gotta understand, yeah, if somebody looks away from camera, the camera's gonna focus on something else. You know, it's not gonna read your mind and say, oh, I'll keep tracking that person's face even though I can't see the face anymore so you've got to drive the camera and when you drive it well the a6300 performs fantastically I think the 6300 is at least as good as SLRs on the market like the 7D Mark II and that's saying a lot because that's getting the 6300 into the territory that it is trying to conquer all right guys, so it is almost time to leave Miami and I just wanna finish up today with talking about who the Sony a6300 is for. Now if you're in the video world, you are gonna love the image quality out of this camera. It's just too bad that we're missing things like the in-body stabilization, the headphone jack, you know, those are key features for videographers and uh, if this camera had that, I think a7R2 sales would plummet in the video world. I mean, seriously. So maybe it's to keep costs down, I'm not sure. In the stills world, I really do think that the 6300 can compete in wildlife, sports, and journalism. No, it's not perfect, and it certainly is not better than SLRs on the market, but it is just as good. I'm gonna go ahead and say that. And now that we have that eight frame per second capability without having to lag behind our shots, being able to see views just like an SLR viewfinder can, that really makes this camera a viable tool for the kind of photography that Sony's trying to get into now. So as far as that mission goes, I think it has very much been accomplished. See, the amazing thing about the A6000 was it conquered the entry-level SLR market, and now the 6300 is poised to do that to the prosumer market. So, if you're the kind of photographer that wants to take a step up, you're going to benefit from the better low-light performance, the faster autofocusing, the ability to shoot quickly, and get the better video to boot, this is the camera for you. We really appreciate you guys joining us in this tropical paradise, and again, remember, check us out on Instagram, talk to us, tweet to us, follow us and subscribe. We'd appreciate that too. Next time you're going to see us, we'll be back home in Calgary where it is much colder, I guarantee it. Until then, guys, thanks.